This is May's Book 2, Chapter 8, Part 4. We would get her some iced tea or water, and she would be on her way back to Rock Steady. And we could hit the Green Apple Bookstore, where we would read excerpts from the Tao Te Ching, or a head shop, or Macy's, or even a bar if she wanted a drink. Hell, I didn't care where we went or what we did, so long as I had her on her feet and getting fresh air. This was good for me, too. Don't think I was just doing this for her. No, I'm not trying to come off as a saint. I really wanted to be there. Getting out of Oakland was always a grand idea. We would sit by the Hidden Lake in Golden Gate Park if we made it all the way up there, or even take the bus sometimes all the way through Sunset to Ocean Beach and watch the kite surfers. She told me I was the only one who listened to her in a long time. I liked to listen to her. This was good for me. There were things she said that a part of me had once thought about and cared about, and that part of me had gone dormant mostly. We talked about Russian blues and meerkats, buck knives and beehives, easy appreciating little amazing gifts the world gave us, without worrying about whatever we thought we had to do or where we had to be. Kel brought me out of hibernation, too, you see, for she did not have to do anything or be anywhere other than find and take more pills to keep her baseline, you know. You get a unique perspective when all your responsibilities have faded away and left you reaching for break-even and nothing more. She liked to go into the pharmacy and check out the makeup, and if I saw a shade of lipstick I liked or an eyeliner pen I needed... She would present it to me long after we left, having perfected the art of boosting to support her habit. She would sell the makeup to girls she met in the circles we traveled, or give it away in the underworld of Oakland, and when I finally introduced her to Bless at the Imperial, she had some lip gloss and powder to offer, so to shore up the foundation of a new friendship. Bless and Freddie were both excited to meet her, and we all went bowling together to celebrate. You know, one of those disco nights at the alley. Master of puppets blaring through the old speakers. Welcome home, sanitarium. Welcome home, dear Kel. Freddy even got his old bones into the action, throwing gutter balls so hard they bounced into neighboring alleys. And he even got a spare on one of their racks. Kel limped about in her pale blues, which passed for bowling shoes, with her deep purple, and she was always good for a few pins at least. I spun some English out of my mind to give her the thrill of the strike. She turned and shrugged her shoulders with a faint smile. Bless and Freddy saw how adorable she was. So adorable they could overlook the scorecard as we jumped ahead of them. Bless was, of course, cheating her balls into impossible last-second spares. That's Bless. So competitive, she would probably split her personality and compete against herself. 